In this episode, we are going to revisit the G-Shock Glide Watch and the finished product. We're going to take some feedback from the retrospective we did last week, which was on the Rangeman. Look at some G-Shock news and, of course, check the Buy website for some interesting deals. Thank you for joining me. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am Matthew Hardman, the G-Shock Watcher, and thank you so much for taking a moment to join me on this Sunday here in Singapore. I've just got back from a trip across Hong Kong and India and really making sure I take the trusty range man, black and yellow, on the road. Um, you know, very interesting look, as you can see here. Uh, you know, great watch, loved it, got to talk to people about G-Shocks and some of the things that they loved about it. In fact, found some people who I didn't necessarily know were G-Shock fans, and they also told me about their experiences as well. So it's been a, a great trip, but the G-Shock range man has held up perfectly. I mean, hold up, it's not going to break, but I love it. It was a great watch. It was very, very comfortable to go ahead and actually wear. Uh, the other thing I did when I got back was to finish the modifications of the G-Shock Glide, the GWX uh, 5600, I think it was. Um, I want to show you this particular one because this is the one that I was having a lot of trouble with. So let me show you what turned out there. Okay, so here is the watch. Uh, this is a GWX 5600. Uh, it's a Dash 1 AJF, is that right? Uh, one JF, yeah, so it's a Japanese one. And this is the one which I modified. So this is a, a G-Shock Glide or G-Shock G-Lide, I guess it probably is. But the in original band and casing was the resin one. Uh, but this has been replaced with a mech-style uh, titanium bracelet, which is uh, is kind of cool. I thought it looks really nice with the positive display, of course. Right, that's really nice. And you can see the tide information and moon phase information at the top. Um, now, if you saw the previous video, which I guess we'll link above, I had real troubles trying to replace the the buttons with the supplied buttons. The supplied buttons that came with this particular case were black. And there was one main black and red one, which I think sort of goes up here. You can see the difference there in the uh, in the case itself. So this one was meant to be the primary button. Um, but it just couldn't get it in there. I tried removing the uh, one of the O-rings on there. But even there when I replaced or well, removed the O-ring, I couldn't get the buttons to be able to push all the way into the mechanism. Now, I'm not sure if that's because of the module that was on the watch or if the buttons were too short. I ordered a second set of buttons and it was the same thing. So I, I imagine it could be to do with the, the module itself. So I replace it back with the original ones. A, a very painful process because once you take off those button catches, which hold the buttons into place, it's really hard to get them back in. And I'm still a bit edgy as I'm worried that the ones I put in were probably too big, but I couldn't even get the smaller ones on. And that's might be due to not having the right sort of tools. But the watch is finished. It actually is a pretty cool looking watch. You know, the positive display, the tight information in this titanium case with the bit of reds in there underneath the labeling on the actual watches uh, on the bracelet. Overall, I think it came out pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with that particular watch, the uh, the GWX 5600 modded with a titanium bracelet. I'll put all the links into the bottom below for the bracelet. I think, funny enough, the last time I went to check this bracelet out, I couldn't actually find the shop anymore. So I'm not sure if they closed down or not, but there should be other alternatives which uh, sell it as well. Uh, final price for this one that I got it for, uh, the watch I got for 19,360 yen, which is about $174 sing. So around about uh, my exchange rate to US is probably all over the place, but maybe $150 US. And the original price for the uh, G-Shock Glide was around about 24,200 yen. So I saved about uh, 4,000, 5,000 yen on the actual uh, actual watch. So yeah, totally cool one. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and actually have a look at the news about some of the new G-Shocks that are coming out. 
going to need my glasses I'm becoming old um, and let's have a look at what we have now this is interesting we've got a BA2100 Bluetooth watch uh, they're calling here an MRGB 2100 B-1A so we've got an MRG version of the classic foundation for a, a Casio watch and certainly we've done many modifications on this channel of this particular style of watch the GAB 2100s um, great foundational watch to uh, go and modify we've done it with some AliExpress kits we've done it with an XKX mod and that one really came out really nicely I mean it was funny the the watch itself or the mod kit was much much more expensive than the watch but I think the final product was kind of cool this one is definitely not in the modding price range you're spending about six thousand eight hundred dollars for an MRG uh, BA2100 and it is an MRG I mean the MRGs are the the top of the line watches that Casio uh, has in their G-Shock range so you would never go ahead and modify this but it looks like it is a very black watch obviously uh, titanium wristband I like this back the back looks very cool very octagonal um, very very nice watch made in Japan shock resistant polished uh, solar power has it got Bluetooth oh yeah it's got Bluetooth for smart link so you could obviously go ahead and actually do your time synchronization through the Casio watch but nice watch super expensive I don't know if I'd go ahead and actually uh, buy that that's a, a $6,800 thing watch but if you're a collectible for MRGs it's uh, it's pretty cool the other one recently this was an interesting news how you can go ahead and actually synchronize your watch with Strava now Strava is a very popular running application for people who like to go ahead and get fit and so Casio's obviously enabled that capability to synchronize your run data with that so it can't be too many watches but okay so we've got three three watches here which you can go and utilize a DWH5600 the GBD H2000 and the GPR H1000 that last one uh, over here is the uh, the current range man now what's interesting the DW5600 does not have GPS so you need to have your smartphone uh, as you run now I try and get into a little bit of fitness when I go outside for a run I've been running on the treadmill recently because I want to get accurate on timing it's something my daughter wanted to uh, uh, get to a certain timing so I said I could do it too um, so I'd prefer not to run with a smartphone in my pocket what I have been using for running and it sounds like I'm a uh, not really aligned to uh, uh, G-Shocks is essentially an Oppo smartwatch and I find that Oppo smartwatch is actually very very good I've got an Android phone the Oppo smartwatch which re works really really well battery life is phenomenal um, it does a great job and I can listen to music on my uh, headphones so I don't have to carry on too much so uh, if you wanted to I guess utilize any of these watches the GBD H2000 and the GPH GPR H1000 uh, obviously watches you could go ahead and actually do with a GPS but again it's not really the complete watch you know uh, if you wanted to be able to go and run with this and then have your music it doesn't have a music player um, so you'd be really really focused on your running so it's a nice feature I just don't know if it's something that I would be saying hey I'm going to give up my Oppo watch for this particular capability I love my G-Shocks I love to go ahead and track the uh, the running when I do it but I feel like this is a compromise to wear the G-Shock without having music and things like that as I run. But nice that Casio has worked with Strava to be able to bring some of those capabilities together in those particular watches. So, so that's kind of cool as well. Some of the interesting things. This one is the Surfrider Foundation watch. And what they're really talking about here is the co-branding and lots of collaborations here. And it uses recycled resin materials from the manufacturing process of the G-Shock now if I'm a little skeptical about this one the idea here to surf rider foundation what they're really about is to help make the oceans cleaner for people to be able to use and they've done the collaboration with G-Shock but 
what we're seeing here is a recycling of G-Shock materials, which is great because if they didn't recycle the materials, where do they end up? They might end up in landfills. They might end up in somewhere else. But it would be kind of cool if they really did this, could they recycle materials out of the ocean that were recovered? You know, like those plastic bottles, like those different things. I'm sure from a commercial point of view, it would be quite difficult to be able to go and do that. Um, but it's nice that they're drawing attention to the Surf Rider Foundation and their efforts to be able to reduce pollution and waste in the uh, in a natural environment. So I think that's kind of cool. $199 for the watch. Um, what have we got here? It's a uh, tough solar, which is good. Uh, beyond that, not too much else. You know, there's no connectivity features, anything like that. Um, sorry, I should put it up on the screen. Uh, tough solar watch, right? So that's good. Collaboration model, but not really much more that that watch actually features there, um, apart from some of the unique branding. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's nice to be able to go and, and do those things. Uh, last one from the G-Shock side. We're going to talk about some Casio stuff as well, kind of related. Uh, G-Shock has a 30th anniversary with Love to See and Earth. And I love these Love to See and Earth watches. I think they do some really, really nice things with colors. The, the back plates on these watches are really cool as well. Um, they've got three watches that they've lined up here. So we've got the GMD W5601, the GW8201, and the GW6904. The two on either side, multiband six and tough solar. The one in the middle, not uh, multiband six, is just tough solar. But titanium ring, Frogman, kind of nice. I mean, that's that's a nice watch if you were sort of really an ocean type person. But then as again, some of these other ones are, are nice as well. Uh, the GMD is a nice watch with that gold outer ring, positive display, kind of nice. Uh, unfortunately, all are sold out. So very very popular uh, sorts of watches okay so uh, let's check out some of the casio stuff they've got a 50th anniversary for casio watch which is kind of cool and we can see all the different casio watches so the baby g's the g-shocks the casiotrons protex and the edifex uh, this is more the racing watch i actually don't own any of these other ones apart from the g-shock and i like this g-shock this is kind of cool if you don't have an MRG digital. Uh, this is actually a nice replacement. It's not an MRG, but the color is very cool. The blue, the gold, and then the uh, the black and white striping on it. But you can see all those watches are taking that same sort of color scheme in terms of what they have. So these ones have nice, this is a Protec one. It's got a nice um, fabric. Uh, I think they call it a NATO strap. Uh, the edifice one has a, that's an interesting strap. Let's have a quick look. Uh, Alcantara band, like looks like felt, which is uh, interesting. It's a nice looking watch, but we're talking G-Shocks. This is our, our G-Shock in that anniversary. I think it's quite striking. It's a metal band, uh, logo on the back. Bluetooth, Bobby, multiple colors on the band. Yeah, I think it's a nice watch. I mean, this this has Bluetooth. It can do all the functionality. Uh, it's tough solar. There's not much you could ask for more, and it's $949 online right now. So it's a fairly good quality watch. Made in Japan, limited edition. I don't know how many it actually are, but it's a limited edition watch, tough solar. You know, this is a, a cool, cool watch. So if you're on the hunt for a nice G-Shock that could hold up in terms of anything you wear, not a bad watch at all. Last one, you know, I would talk about, there's a lot of feedback on the G-Shock Rangeman retrospective, which was really, really nice. Uh, people really resonated with that. And what a lot of people told me was they thought uh, along the same sort of lines as we've gone on progressively in terms of uh, of watches, the range man itself has become overly complicated. People tended to resonate with the simplicity of the uh, the G Shock range mans in terms of just being a super resilient, tough watch that has some nice features. And many people said they never really even use those features, but they're there. It's not complicated by an app. It's not complicated by a super digital display and GPS tools and all those different things, but 
they like the uh, the capabilities of what it can go ahead and actually do. So um, really appreciate the feedback. And as I sort of said in that video, uh, which I guess we'll link somewhere here, there was such a cool range of collaboration models and special edition models that uh, Rangemans actually had. And one person, as I sort of noted in the video, how much I love the Hong Kong uh, fire department uh, edition and how I've never really seen them for sale was kind enough. He was a, a fireman himself, was kind enough to point me out to where there was actually one that could be purchased. And I think the seller is actually here in Singapore. So uh, I might have to risk divorce because that was a watch I really liked the look of. Uh, and they want about $800 sing. So we'll see. I mean, it's a nice watch. It'd be a great one to add to the collection. But as my wife will probably say, you've got enough as it is. But it is a uh, unique sort of watch. So, look, really appreciate everybody uh, who tuned in for that video and watched it. It's been going off on the uh, on YouTube, and you know people left some really nice comments. So, thank you very very much. So, let's take a look now over onto the Buy website at some of the watches. I actually went through and spent some time to look for some of those collaboration range bands and and get a view of the price range. And uh, no surprise, they're upwards of say. 600 to 800 dollars for some of the collaboration fire watches but let's have a look at those and let's have a look at some of the unique watches that we've found over at the uh, the buy website okay so starting off with this watch i thought this was quite funny to be able to go and find because this is using the same band as what we had with this one uh that titanium mech band i don't know if you get that view focused in there um, which we just sort of saw. Uh, but this one is around about $2,979 Singapore, so 330,000 yen. Now, okay, look, mine mine is a modification watch, uh, but the band, all the, all the uh, inscribings and everything are pretty much similar. The one thing, obviously, which I could not replicate was when we look at this, is obviously those buttons, which I couldn't get into the watch. I'd love to go back and try it, but I just couldn't get it to sit right. And of course, the face is different because mine actually has a uh, moon and tide graph. I can't get that to focus really well, but mm, nope, I'm not going to make that work. <laughs> Failed miserably on the YouTube there, uh, but. Mine's got the tide and the uh, moon phase on there, but the bezel and the watch, except the buttons, all pretty much the same. Now, of course, this is an original one, so the price here is three thousand versus whatever I spent here. So that that's an interesting one to find. Next one here, while we're on modifications, this was definitely the gold bling bling of G-Shock watches. It's a GW B fifty six hundred, and I was looking at that going. That doesn't look necessarily legit. And if we go back and look at that particular model, it is this one with the uh, gold on the outside and the resin square. So they've obviously done a aftermarket modification on it. The yellowy gold is probably not really something I'd go for. Some people like that sort of stuff, uh, but interesting watch all the same. Going now to looking at Rangemans and after our G-Shock retrospective, Lots of people love the uh, the range bands. And this was some of the research I was doing on how much these uh, collaboration models actually cost. And you can sort of see many of these are the uh, the fireman ones from Japan. And the prices we're looking at can easily range from uh, $700 Sing, uh, $576, you know, so anywhere from between $500 to $800. Wow, this one is $1,200. This one looks like the, I think this is a Kobe Fire Department one. Uh, let's have a look. I can't actually, oh yeah, Kobe City Fire City Department one. So it's a much more brighter red. This one's a bit more harder to find at 140,000 yen. So super, super expensive, some of these range band. But uh, as we sort of realized, as we went through and did the G-Shock retrospective, a lot of people really like these particular watches. So Kind of cool. All right, we're going to shotgun through these pretty quick. This was the one I purchased. So the uh, the G-Shock here, uh, the range man with the yellow tinge, right? Great looking watch, really comfortable. I seem to wear it a lot more than what I would wear other watches. So 
not a bad price at 21,000 yen. This typically is 55,000 yen. Uh, seven hours left. So if you get on there quickly, you could snatch a good bargain on that one. This is very interesting coming out pretty quickly. Uh, this is a collaboration model or a very limited uh, model, which was with the uh, band called Tribe called Quest, kind of very much hip hop, early rap in those days. Interesting sort of band. Very, very uh, in your face type colors, black and neons and things like that. What was unique about this, it actually comes with a mixed tape of the band's music there. So, you know, their album called The Low End Theory and many younger people probably don't even know where this tape would actually go. Lucky for me, most of the people who are on our channel is in the ages of 30 to 50, so we probably all know what a tape deck actually is. But this would be a uh, interesting collaboration and a very, very rare one. Prices around about... $650 sing and I couldn't necessarily find that actual watch on Shockbase. Uh, so the typical price is about $80 US. Uh, so very, very high price, but as they sort of say, very limited edition. Moving on, this is an interesting one. And sometimes you see people who are going out and selling uh, MRGs at interesting prices. I saw these ones and I couldn't quite work out what they actually were, but they are limited editions to uh, 50 pieces, and I can't even check out on Shockbase where they are. I got close to it. Um, this one is 43 of 50. This one here is 11 of 50. And the best I could actually find was this particular watch, which was released in China for 51,000 renminbi. Um, the price they're looking at it here is $5,418. So if we did this price, let's have a look. If we add another tab here, 51,000 Rimbimbi to Sing, that's $9,000. So coming back here, this is under the price it actually came out at, if indeed that's the actual watch, but it is a limited edition watch. It's a very interesting looking watch. It's an old school MRG with the older band. Uh, same as this one, the older band set on there as well, and probably the same sort of price. So, you know, hard to to check if it's legit. I can't find model numbers. I did check the back and had a look at the model numbers there, but they don't necessarily match up on Shockbase, and I'm sure Shockbase isn't necessarily the only source of, of valid information. But the numbers match out. You can see the bottom here. It's got the, the number 11. This is 11 of 50. And then down the bottom here on this side is a 43 of 50, as they say. So I'd be curious to know if anybody knows about these MRG limited edition of 50, uh, 50 units because it's an interesting looking watch. Certainly not in my cheap price range, but uh, uh, something which is interesting to go and see. Another one quickly is the Casio MRG Shiego Nagashima watch, uh, a baseball inspired watch. Very, very nice, very simple, very clean looking watch. Uh, this one was going for 380,000 yen. It's currently at 348,000 yen, including tax. A little bit of damage, a little bit of wear, uh, but a nice looking watch all the same. Nice titanium bracelet. We jump across. This one's interesting, talking about the, uh, the China pricing. This was a China collaboration watch, a GM2100 MWG. It's a collaboration watch with the science department, I think it is. So there you go. Collaboration with China Aerospace Science and Technology International Exchange Center. So a uh, very uh, groovy sort of watch with that, you know, resin band and that star-like uh, face. That one there is going for 20,000 yen. Uh, its original price was 42,000. It's about half price right now with one day left to go. So unique sort of watch. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting one which you could go and grab. This one was another interesting one. This was a GBD H1000. When we're talking about the Strava synchronizing, uh, this one is at 198. Uh, Sing, it's around about 50,000 yen, so 20,000 yen, less than half price. Uh, I don't really have too much on what this watch actually is like. It looks similar to the second generation range man, but I think this is more in the line of the fitness series uh, watches. So 2020 uh, G-Shock G-Squad watches. So 
really more about sleep tracking, uh, sorry, step tracking, thermometer, GPS. So obviously you can sync up with your phone. Bluetooth is actually there. So maybe it could work with Strava. I don't know. But uh, on the surface, it doesn't look like it. This was a nice one, the Golf Master. Uh, so this Golf Master watch, again, nice looking watch, very, very clean on the uh, on the surface. If we have a look at that watch there, not too much damage. This was for 10,000 yen. The original price is 125,000 yen. So this probably would be deal of the week if we had such a feature. However, this particular watch has six days of uh, of prices to go as well 19 bits it's only going to go up in price pretty quickly but nice watch is actually one of the first watches to have a quad sensor in it because it has a depth meter in the watch as well so uh, interesting watch from that point of view 2016 golf master nice watch at that price if you could get it now here's those love to see an earth watches obviously we know where they went when they sold out they went to people to try and actually resell them uh, the price is here, 72,000, uh, 72,800, uh, both two different people, uh, but both have the same sort of range. Uh, sorry, they both have the Frogman watches for $600. That's almost around the price, 79,200 yen is the retail price. So it's a little bit cheaper. Uh, we'll have to see if people go and actually buy those particular watches. Interesting. We've got these last couple of ones, which I thought was interesting as well. We've got here a G-Shock Frogman. And the price of this one is $167. Now, it started off at 1 yen, so that's cheap. Um, normal price of this particular watch is around about 132,000 yen, and it's 18,000. So it's about six, a sixth of the normal price right now. But again, this also has six days remaining on the actual auction. What was intriguing, I found a couple of auctions of the same thing. Now, this particular person, if we switch back, also has another watch, which was nice. This was the, the B2100, the, the metal-based one with sort of the sunshine colors. Uh, this one was $121, and typically, so 13,000 yen goes for 89,000 yen. So they're obviously bidding very, very low, but the person sort of says, uh, hey, I've removed bad ratings. If you will delete it, if you win, they're selling because I need to raise funds for a new item in Yabadashi in mid-April, which has already gone past. But if we go back here, same sort of story as well. Made the purchase last month on Rakuten. It's an unused item. Um, I mean, interesting. It could be legit. It, it's hard to tell. I've never had a bad experience so far on Bai, but these two watches are definitely a lot cheaper than what they normally retail for. But I would actually say it's still six days to go. And of course, these prices will go up very, very quickly. So you, you kind of get that sort of uh, uh, experience on uh, on buy. You've got to be willing to fail, I guess, uh, or get them wrong. But so far, so far, so good. I haven't necessarily had a, a problem. So you know, those two are pretty interesting. So, you know, in terms of, you know, really, really good deals, this uh, this G-Shock, this G-Squad one, priced pretty well, $200. What would, what did we say here? 22,000 yen and normally, ah, 50,000 yen, that wasn't the one. There was one which we found uh, earlier. Anyway, these ones are pretty good prices as well. Uh, and then maybe... The purple one, maybe it might be a bit too expensive as well. But some cool watches all the same to go ahead and actually find. So anyway, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today to check out some of the watches on Bai. Uh, thanks so much for the support on the G-Shock retrospective on the Rangeman. Please keep your comments coming in. Please like and subscribe. The support is absolutely awesome. It keeps me going. And thank you so much. Have a great weekend.